Thank the gentleman. Let me call upon the gentleman from California, Mr. Gomez, to inquire. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For me, health care has always been a personal issue, just like millions of Americans. Um, I grew up without he health insurance almost my entire life until I got out of college. Um, I know what it's like when you get sick or you get injured and your parents have to worry what they're going to do with you. Are they going to wait to see if you get better or are they going to rush you to an emergency room uh, to <laughs> deal with bills that you can't afford? Right? I've seen them make those decisions. When I was seven years old, I ended up in the hospital with pneumonia. Spent about a week in, in, that, in that hospital. And uh, with the missed uh, work shifts, because my parents worked five to six jobs a week to make ends meet, um, the new hospital bills, we almost bank it almost bankrupted my family. And I know that because my uh, siblings later that year told, us, told me that we weren't getting presents for Christmas because of the hospital bills. So this is an issue, right? This is before the Affordable Care Act. And since then, we've had millions of Americans covered through Medicaid expansion or Medi-Cal as it's called in California, covered, uh, covered California, the marketplaces have been established, and you've seen improvements. But the improvements aren't enough. I have a constituent, Janetta Costa, who passed away from cervical cancer. And she had private insurance. But when she tried to make an appointment when she knew something was wrong, she couldn't get an appointment. So where did she turn? She turned to Planned Parenthood, or got her in the door quickly. And once she got into the, uh, through the door, they did the test. But unfortunately, that test showed that she was at stage four cervical cancer and she would lose her battle with this disease. Now, to say that uh, everything is peachy king and everybody has access is missing the point, right? And then at the same time, people say, you know what? We are for providing health care. We care about these Americans. But then why are you trying to repeal the Affordable Care Act? Not, you know, once, twice, but almost 70 times trying to repeal the Affordable Care Act, right? That is, in my opinion, shameful. Um, so we're having discussions on how to make things better. And I want to, um, really? I know a lot of my colleagues have used over-the-top rhetoric to try to scare people, especially seniors. Dr. Newman, can you talk about how these proposals would actually expand benefits for seniors and people with disabilities? Yes, thank you for that question. Um, the, men, these proposals in the Medicare for All proposal would absorb the current Medicare program. And People on Medicare would pay no premiums, no cost sharing, but it would also fill some of the significant gaps that result in very high out-of-pocket costs. Dental, we have heard about the cost of dental and the problems of not having dental coverage. Vision, but the big one is long-term services and supports, which most people on Medicare really cannot afford. Median savings for a person on Medicare is something like $75,000. So if you have a nursing home expense or if you have multiple years of needing someone at home, people can't afford it. And so what these proposals do is they fill these gaps so that people can afford the care that they need and reduce cost sharing requirements. They also, by the way, would extend to other people protections that are in Medicare, like no surprise bills, right? Medicare is, protects people against that a broad network of providers. So it, it does more for people on Medicare, but extends the Medicare protections that has made Medicare so popular to younger people as well. So you think uh, the criticisms and the rhetoric that's been used is uh, um, that seniors shouldn't worry about their health care if a new proposals come forward? I think under these proposals, they would get a lot more. They may pay more in taxes, but they would certainly get more in benefits. Thank you. As I mentioned, um, health care is personal, but my, it's also personal for my district. I have 74 delivery sites for community health centers, 10 hospitals. Um, these centers play a critical role. Ms. Brooks Lachure, how would the proposals we are discussing today impact community health centers? Thank you also for the question. I think. You know, when we're talking about reimbursement and providers and access, something that people often forget about is that community health centers are actually better paid often through the Medicaid program um, than they are in the commercial market. And, um, and many of the proposals that are under discussion today certainly um, have 
it, it still have employer-sponsored insurance and private insurance companies operating. They just have, may have more requirements to make sure they're covered. One of the things that the ACA did was make sure that um, community health care centers um, would get funding and also be a part of um, of, of, the, of the plans when people were enrolling. And a lot of these um, proposals would continue to build on that and make sure that uh, people with, could have access at community health centers. Thank you so much. My time is up, so I'll yield back to the chair.